You have probably been told up to here that atoms make up everything. Hopefully you were also told that those atoms are made up of smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons, with each of them bearing a charge of positive one, zero, and negative one, respectively. You are likely told that these are the smallest subatomic particles that make up all matter. Well, guess what? You've been told wrong. It turns out that electrons are, in fact, a fundamental particle, meaning that you can't break it up into smaller pieces. So whereas electrons are not made of smaller particles, the protons and neutrons are. In fact, they're made of three smaller particles called quarks. Wait a minute, what is a quark? Well, that's a great question. How do you explain what a quark is? Let's start here. Quarks are one of the fundamental particles of the universe. For example, protons are made of three quarks and so are neutrons. There are six types, or how physicists officially call it, flavors. I know terminology is probably the, like, the funniest and unfitting one ever. Um, I mean, you don't just say, I would like to have two scoops of chocolate quarks and one scoop of vanilla quark on the top, please. No, do not get confused. You cannot taste quark. It's just how you call it. So anyways, the flavors of quarks are up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Got that? Up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom. Remember these in a specific order, you will see why. It will make your life much easier by the end of this video. So going back to the protons and neutrons, protons are made of two up quarks and one down quark, and the neutrons are made of one up quark and two down quarks. So do you remember that all atoms on the periodic table of elements are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? So basically the same as up quarks, down quarks, and electrons. But there were so many more quarks. What happened to the charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks? Alright, fellas, time to experience a brain expansion. Are you ready? Great, let's start. Do you remember? Actually, you wouldn't. You probably and hopefully didn't even exist when the Big Bang happened. But according to modern science, when the Big Bang happened, not everything was created at the same instant. But instead, there are three generations or three families of particles that were created shortly following the explosion. This does not mean that the time is different or it's a different universe. It's all in the same universe that we live in. And it's not that the first generation particles turn into the second and yada yada yada. All that means is that the first generation particles were created first, then the second, then the third. The particles created later are also heavier, which means they carry more energy. Remember that energy is proportional to mass whether you're using the equation E equals half of mv squared or E equals mt squared. So the third generation has the highest energy, then the second, then the first. Still pretty intuitive, huh? The first generation is called the ordinary matter, and it's what it sounds like. The first generation elementary particles make up all matter that we see on Earth, including you, me, your computer, uranium-235, etc. The second generation is called cosmic radiation, and its particles make up whatever that comes from the stars. So stuff from far away that sometimes reaches the Earth, showering on the atmosphere, sometimes getting through the atmosphere and giving us a chance to observe them. Our sun also releases some second generation particles, for instance, during the solar flares. But because they have such high energy, they decay away really quickly. The third generation is called accelerators. Particles in this generation were observed in a very high energy accelerator that simulated a millionth of a second after the Big Bang. These particles have really high energy that you wouldn't see them elsewhere. I mean, even the second generation particles decay away quickly, but the third generation particles have even higher energy, which means they're not going to be observable. Now, time for some super simple math. So there were six flavors of quarks and three generations of particles in the universe. And since each generation has the same number of quarks, six divided by three is two, that's quick math. And remember how I asked you to remember the quark flavors in this order? Up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom. Now it's time to use it. The first two quarks, up and down, belong to the first generation of particles. And the second two, charm and strange, to the second. And the last two, top and bottom, to the third. There, now you have half of the standard model particles. Now that you got some basic numbers drilled down in your head, time for some more numbers. Just chill though, it's one small number. Are you ready? Great. So for each generation, there are four fundamental particles that make up all matter in the generation. There are two quarks per generation. This leaves us with two more fundamental particles per generation. Let's start with the ordinary matter. So we already have the two quarks up and down. Do you recall me saying in the beginning that all ordinary matter on the periodic table of elements are simply made of protons, neutrons, and electrons? And protons and neutrons happen to be up and down quarks, but the electrons themselves are a fundamental particle? Well, anyways, it looks like we have the third fundamental particle of the first generation, aka ordinary matter. For the other two generations, instead of electrons, there are particles called muons and tau particles, and their charge-like properties are similar to electrons. You can think of it this way. 
Just like quarks of higher energy go to a higher generation number, so do the electrons. So in the first generation, where the energy is lowest, you have the default electron, and in the second generation, where the energy is slightly higher, well technically it's significantly higher, you have the muon electron, and in the third generation, where the energy is highest, you have the tau electron, but you just call them muon and tau particles. These three particles are called leptons. So what we have right now as fundamental particles of the first generation is the up quark, down quark, and electron. That's three, we need one more. The fourth fundamental particle is called a neutrino. Wait, what is a neutrino? Actually, let's hold it there. We'll come back to it later. Remember that there are six different flavors of quarks, with two flavors per generation. Neutrinos have it similarly, but it's more simple. There are three different flavors of quarks, and it's basically the lepton names. From here on, it should be fairly straightforward. The electron neutrino goes with the electron, the muon neutrino with the muon, and the tau neutrino with the tau. And that's it for the standard model for quarks and leptons, which are classified as fermions. So here you have the four fundamental particles for each generation. First generation, up quark, down quark, electron, electron neutrino. And second generation, charm quark, strange quark, muon, and muon neutrino. Third generation, top quark, bottom quark, tau, and tau neutrino. So that's enough for today, I guess. It's probably better to stop it here before it gets too much and blows away everyone's mind. I mean, this is from experience, but usually when I get up to different flavors of quarks, I start losing people. So hopefully this made some sense. Sorry I couldn't cover more about the neutrinos in the video. And please let me know in the comment section whether I should make another video about neutrinos, bosons, four fundamental forces, interactions including decays, balance, and interaction, etc. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.